Hey, it's John and Mike, brew-dudes.com. Today we're talking about Kvake yeast and uh, comparing it to US05 because um, although we've read of lots about how tremendous this Norwegian yeast strain is and what's commercially available to us here in the United States and also, you know, reading more about, you know, Chip Walton's trip to Norway and how Kvake is more than just yeast, it's like a whole community celebration of beer and just community in general, um, we really want to understand what, what kind of uh, flavors does this yeast bring to the party in terms of, you know, brewing your own beer at home, knowing that, you know, it supposedly ferments super quick and at high temperatures and so on. But we thought that it'd be great just to brew one beer and talk about it, but what if we brew the exact same beer right next to um, uh, one with uh, US05, which we kind of have a good understanding of what that does with a uh, home beer, brewed beer. And then we'd brew a Quebec yeast um, beer. Basically, I brewed one on Sunday, one on Monday, and we have both of them here. So here is the recipe for um, this. I'm just calling it uh, the, the Quebec uh, versus US05 showdown beer. Um, I was thinking like farmhouse, so I started looking at local ingredients. So, okay, it's kind of a, I don't know, I had this idea and then, of course, trying to go to my local homebrew shop and trying to get specific amounts that I need and they're like, you asked for this, but we only have this, is that okay? And so I had to, I had to do what I could. But, so the base malt is as follows. I uh, got uh, nine pounds or four kilograms of stone path Northeast Gold Pale Malt. That's out of a maltster here in Massachusetts, of Wareham, Massachusetts. Uh, I had to supplement that with some uh, raw premium Pilsner. I had a pound of that, or uh, 0.45 kilograms. And then uh, topped it off with some flake barley, uh, one pound or another four, uh, 0.45 uh, kilograms of that. Uh, for water, I used straight up tap water. I did treat that with a Camden tablet. I did add to, um, to the actual kettle, once uh, all the wort was collected, four grams of gypsum, just because we need to bring our sulfate right up. To do. And right even though and it's calcium. a... And we need more calcium. Yep, and just and even, even with that, it's still a 2.5 chloride to sulfate ratio. So, you know, it's gonna be malty, but that's what we're dealing with. I, I really need to start getting distilled water again, now that I feel like yeah. the rush on water is down because, you know, we've sort of gotten to a, a point in, this, yeah. in these COVID days. I think I can get some distilled water without feeling bad. Um, mashed uh, with uh, four gallons or uh, 15 liters of water for 60 minutes at 150 degrees Fahrenheit, 66 degrees Celsius, then sparged with um, five gallons uh, or 19 liters of water um, and collected, you know, about seven and a half gallons or so um, in, the, in the pot. For hops, uh, for 60 minutes uh, of the boil, I put in Yakima Valley hops, Medusa hops, uh, they are neo, uh, neo Mexicanus variety. So again, local-ish. <laughs> um, one ounce of that or 28 grams of that. Uh, 3% IBUs, 3% or I'm sorry, 3% alpha acids on that oh, really? uh, for 60 minutes to get some kind of bitterness there. I thought at 3%, like there's nothing. Okay. Uh, and then somehow I got New Zealand hops from a local farm here in Massachusetts. Um, Four Star Farms has Raku hops, um, and they're out of Northfield, Massachusetts. Had uh, two ounces or 57 grams. That was added at 15 minutes to go in the boil. That's at 10.7% uh, alpha acid. Then did another two ounces, 57 grams, at flame out. Same hops, the Raku hops, and then left uh, two ounces or 57 grams uh, added at the third day of fermentation. Same variety, same farm of Raku hops. Now, um, batch one, which is in this glass, we use WLP 518 Opshog Kvake yeast, one pouch. We pitch that, and not as warm as I, white, white Labs, is that what you said? White Labs, yep, or yep, WLP, yep. Okay. So, 
Uh, we pitched that at 78 degrees Fahrenheit or 26 degrees Celsius. I can, you know, this thing can work between, you know, 90, 32, 95, 35 Celsius. But I was like, well, what if I go too hot and then the whole thing, you know, goes to crap and then, then I got nothing and that wouldn't be great. But I'm pretty sure it would be okay. Reading those articles, it was like, they didn't even use thermometers. They were just like, nah, it feels good. Throw it in. And we fermented for 10 days uh, for both batches. Sorry, uh, batch two was just a, a packet of USO5 sprinkled right on top. Uh, we pitched that at 72 degrees Fahrenheit, 22 degrees Celsius. Um, kept those temperatures pretty much because I put one in the cooler part of my basement. Uh, the other one stayed uh, in the warmer part. Um, so that the temperature stayed pretty much the same throughout the whole fermentation process. That was 10 days. Starting gravity was 1060 on both. They both ended at 1012. 1012? So, yes. Okay. So not much of a difference in terms of gravity. actual, oh. yes, change in gravity or like what I would say uh, productivity from the yeast. It really is going to come down to taste and what does what I guess that's good yes right? I mean, what yeast strain as as like minimizing variables I'm trying my best I, I did as best as I could to, to minimize everything the grain bill is exactly the same the yeast the water treatment everything's exactly the same so at the beginning when you said so this is Pilsner malt carapils and flaked barley I'm nope. was, I missed the middle one no you uh, flake barley Pilsner but the majority is Gold pale malt from oh, Stone malt. Path, Stone Path, I guess, farms or uh, maltster. It's their Norreese gold pale so malt. Pale malt yeah. and some flaked barley. And some Pilsner malt. And Pilsner malt. Yes. Okay. okay. For a and, five, yeah. Okay. And so, but when you said earlier you were thinking about farmhouse, I mean, this, this sort of is the recipe and the hopping is decidedly American ale, though. It's right? exactly. I'm just trying it, to it's understand. more of like it, farmhouse. I'm just trying in, to understand what I'm trying to explain. In the idea of, hey, this is what I have available in oh, my okay. radius okay. around my okay. home. Now, of course, that's. I'm not growing this malt in my backyard. I'm not using uh, hops that I harvested from last year. I don't know. Oh, I, I just was, didn't want to be. I was just uh, not. I just didn't want to do a New England IPA hop bomb and then compare that because I was trying to figure out more about what the yeast was bringing in terms of flavor and you know just the overall impression you got from the yeast so i thought you know yeah. a, a pale ale was better use and i just kind of was being funny about using ingredients from you know my home state even yeah. though i you know i had to supplement it with some pilsner mm. so i guess you're waiting on me the um yeah, whenever you're ready. The USO5 is, um, I think there's more hop aroma in the nose. And I mean, it, it's a great American pale blonde ale. The, the hops character is bright and clean. Hmm. Um, there's a little bit of a, um, a, a, there's a little more mouth feel to it like, than I would have expected normally from a beer like this. Yeah. Um, but that is also because I'm comparing it to the other one too. So there's there's a little bit more of a coating mouthfeel in the USO5 in this recipe. But the hops are pretty bright. They're very fruity. There's a lot of character there. The Quebec yeast is actually comes across. If I didn't know what the gravities were, it comes across feeling drier. A little it's, drier. It's yeah. a little bit thinner body-wise. But that's not to say that it's thin. It's um, it's, it's still got a medium to thin body, whereas this is strictly like medium bodied. Um, so I find that pretty interesting. Two, uh, the hop, the aroma is, the hop aroma, the hop nose is subdued, right? Like I, I don't get the hop nose on this as I do here. Mm -hmm. And there's also um, a very subtle, like uh, almost a Belgian wit nose to it a little bit of a almost a phenol positive and i don't remember if this strain is phenol positive but it's supposed it's to be pretty subtle. neutral and yeah yeah well yeah. yeah yeah um so that's interesting uh and the flavor is uh the hop character is a little bit more there's like a there's a fruit note there's like a high a, a, more of like a tartness 
to the fruit note yep. here than there is here. Yeah. That's a better way. It's a little bit, I don't want to say brighter, it just feels, tastes a little bit more acidic. A little citrusy, yeah. And the bitterness, the, the bitterness is less here than it is in the US 05, but it, but there's the, the hop flavor component tends to linger more in my mouth here yeah. with the Kvek than with the The US hop bitterness 05. stays a lot longer with the uh, aftertaste in we the We should Kvek just note is. too that for what it's worth, yeah. the Kvek is a little bit, is significantly more haze holding than yeah. the um, US 05. They both seem to have the same head retention, the same bubble size, if you will. If anything, maybe the US 05 is a little lighter in color, uh, but it could just because I'm looking at it against the hazier beer. So they're both pretty good. I mean, they're both great. Um, I don't, uh, I'll just say it and people can flame me. I just don't, I'm not like digging on this. Like this isn't like amazing me. Um, I like this one better. Hmm. I just like this one better. Um, this one's interesting. Uh, knowing what the variable is and all that, but I like the way the hops present here. I like the body better here, the dryness here. But that's but you could cha fix that here with mash tam yeah. or something, right? So that's not really a fair comparator. Um, it is interesting that it's the thing is if I didn't have anything to compare this, I'd say like, oh, this is a great medium body. I wouldn't, you know, yeah. I wouldn't diss it because of the body yeah. either. Yeah. Um, just a few notes on fermentation, uh, because that's something else I kept an eye on. Yep, that's what we Knowing we're that, uh, you know, the, the turnaround time with these Kvek yeast should be like three days. And I'd say that, yeah. Uh, so I checked like the first 24 hours of the Kvek fermentation were pretty uh, mellow. I like, I even had to open up the top just to take a look. And there are bubbles, but they were kind of like soap bubbles, like kind of yep. big, yep. not like big foamy Krausen that, you know, the US 05 was completely different. It had, you know, thick foamy head, yeah. you know, that, you know, is typical for what I'm used to. You just to. pitched the white lab tube direct. Just one, right? I didn't do any kind of starter, like yeah. just threw in just yeah. the, the, the tube or, yeah, it's now a tube, it used to be. Whatever you yeah, call it's it. It's like a pouch a now, pouch. right? Um, but then, like day two, then there was definitely more activity, and then by day three, it was done. It was done. Like d yeah, done, done. Did you take a gravity reading then? I, to I see took it. Was? I took a gravity reading at day seven. Okay. And that's basically, that's when I knew it was completely done. Yeah. But I did not because I again I, I wanted to. Did you crack it open on day three and see that the like crossing yes. had fallen? Yes, all that? and okay. that's what I mean. I mean by like yeah. visible signs of fermentation yeah. were gone, yeah. where the US05 was still cracking you know, was still doing its thing into like day five. So I think certainly the, the stories are true that this does for ferment quickly. I can next time take a sample and see how uh, it, that tastes. But I mean, it, if that's what they're doing in Norway after like day five, they, they're just, you know, opening up the tap and pouring it out for people to taste and drink and such, you know, that's, that's gonna be what we are, will encounter here. Right, right, sure. right. Um, but yeah, I think that, you know, even though it was not at, uh, it probably would have had more signs of life if I had pitched it at a, at a warmer temperature that, you know, 90 degrees Fahrenheit, 32 degrees Celsius, you know, if I had done that. Like, they were both fermented at the same temperature, basically, right? No, nah, a little bit. The, the Quebec was a little higher. Okay. Yeah, it was like Just 70. Just because of where it was? Just the... where it was. And like, I wanted to like, knowing that I could get away with uh, so there's the part of my basement's yeah, yeah. finished, so I yeah. have some insulation yeah. in some of the interior rooms, and so I kept it in the bedroom of the basement, which it stays pretty cool all year yeah. round. So that's that was a big difference. The other was on the unfinished part. Well, I think this is a fair comparison to what we normally qualify in our minds as a neutral yeast, mm. um, and fermenting them at the same temperature. Yeah, it's so to start playing with this and comparing it to things we know, you gotta start somewhere. And this is, I think, a fair place to start, right? Yeah. I'd like to do one maybe where you, we ferment this at 70 degrees and ferment the one at, at, you know, 85, 90 degrees and see how those flavor profiles compare. Yeah. Right? I mean, there's so many different options with it to try to get a sense of whether something that makes sense to us or whether we like it or not or whatever. I mean, that's the selling point is that you can get a clean, cleanish ferment apparently with out temperature control. I mean, I think that's one of the reasons yeah. why the hysteria, the excitement has grown. Sure. It's just that a lot of a lot of home brewers this time of year, especially don't right. necessarily have temperature control. Yep, that's true. Right? So uh, you can let it do its thing. Yep. 
And I also was able to harvest some of the Quebec geese, so mm -hmm. I put in an order for some other strains, because I know that this is the one I could get because my local homebrew store had it. Right. It's not the one I was looking for. Right. Certainly in the recipes I'm looking online, it's like it's not the one that they're using. Yep. But, you know, beggars can't be choosers, and I That's use this. That's a whole this. other thing, where you start yeah. comparing strains. Yes. So hopefully comparing we, strains at the two temperatures. Yeah. Or, you know, maybe we'll just, we'll, we'll try a couple of just like limit the variations and see, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, what the, what's the answer we want to make, right? So, all right. Any final thoughts on your uh, first Kvake no, yeast I think, I beer? Think, uh, more research is warranted. So, I see. Uh, I don't hate it. Um, I'm not, you know, uh, blown away by it. But, uh, I mean, I'm, it tastes great. Yeah, it's not bad. We'll see where we go from here. That's my point. So do you think I could use this in a Belgian quad? Supposedly. <laughs> Co-pitch it with something else to get the funk. That's the only thing. Well, you use a different strain. Yeah. Some of the other strains have the funk. Have the They're funk. not all neutral. Yep. Right? Could I use... Uh, all right. I'm trying to figure out ones that... I'd, you probably yeah. crush a quad with this if it ferments that hard yeah. and that fast. Yeah, true that. Um, all right. Don't give me any ideas. All right. Calm down. All right. So hopefully you learned something. If you haven't brewed with Quebec yeast yet, definitely give it a try because uh, it's it's fun. If you can get your hands on a pouch or a packet or whatever, um, brew up a batch. And certainly if you're looking for, you know, something that's going to quickly ferment, this is the strain for you. Um, if uh, temperature controls in your, in your wart are a problem this time of year, uh, that's not going to be a problem if you can cool it down below 100 degrees Fahrenheit or so. Um, uh, it's it's an interesting yeast and uh, certainly I think the question we had was like yeah but like what's the flavor like you know and I think we've proven to ourselves that it's neutral enough um, to handle a an, an American pale ale recipe and you know be pitched uh, side by side with you know a traditional US ale strain and you know fairly comparable yeah right? i mean i think we're a little late to the kvake party but the good news about that is i think a lot of the misinformation has settled down hmm. and now it's time to like look at the strains that are available and yep. think about you know logical ways to compare them and 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 uh, experiment and play with them at that there you go right. all right so if you like this video give us a thumbs up if uh you dig this kind of video we do this every week so subscribe to our channel for John and Mike, brew-dudes.com, brew on. Cheers.